There are so many items in Pokemon Legends Arceus that it gets pretty overwhelming trying to learn exactly what each and every one of these items do. Luckily, I've got your back, so let's do a deep dive into what exactly the items are within the game and how exactly to use them. How's it going everyone? It's Abdallah here with another awesome Pokemon Legends Arceus tips and tricks tutorial video. Today's video is showcasing everything you need to know about all the different items within the game. And yeah, there's a bunch of new items that have different mechanics than what we're used to from the previous Pokemon titles. Thanks so much for watching, and of course, thanks so much for picking up the Legends tea right over here. Show your support for the series by checking it out at AbdallahSmash.com. All right, let's get this show on the road and teach you everything about items. So the first thing that you're going to want to know is the fact that you can only carry a finite amount of them within your pockets. So if you guys remember any of the previous Pokemon games, yeah, some of them have an item limit, but the more newer ones have like an unlimited amount. This game, not so much. Your satchel has a certain amount of spaces on there. As you can see right over this way, uh, each of them is 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 42 is what I currently have. Now, the way that I have so many is because I purchased a lot of inventory upgrades. Now, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to upgrade your inventory because that is going to be the most important thing about items within the game. So, after you've gone through and played through a little bit of the main story mode, fighting a noble, um, and coming over this way, you'll find this character right over here. His name is Baggett. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to have to pay him a certain amount of money for him to give you one additional item slot within your satchel. I've got 42, and I've paid upwards of 500, 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500. It keeps on going to a point where it was 10,000, 12,000, 16,000, 18,000. And now it's at 20,000 and I still have to go and grind some more money in order to max out bag space. So anyway, as you can see over here, it is worth spending your money on. I cannot stress that enough. That is what you're going to be using every single time because the last thing that you want is to be going out on an adventure and then a little pop-up saying you don't have room in your satchel to pick that item up. So now that you know how to expand your storage, let's actually go through all of the different items within the game. Now I'm going to give you guys a brief idea of what they are so you know exactly what to do with them and I'll give you guys a little hint as to where to find them too. So anyway, one of the first things that you need to know how to do is use the organize item storage button by pressing minus on your Nintendo Switch. It's inevitable that your item box is going to be all jumbled up with stuff, so press the minus button once and then it'll always arrange everything by type, which is so helpful. You can also do that with your satchel too. Very fun. Um, also, one of the things too, if you want a certain item to show up at the very front or the top of the list, uh, like let's say for example, you've got uh, the Ultra Balls over here and you want it to always show up on the very top, simply put, click the A button and then go over to favorite and it'll put a star on it. So you can see over here, if I press minus for organize items, the Ultra Ball will be right up top. And then same thing with organizing your satchel, it'll zoom right over to the top. Anyway, you want to be able to favorite all of your Pokeballs because those things are going to be used all the time. Anyway, so let's jump into this. I'm going to move my camera so that you guys can read the flavor text on all these items and we'll go from there. All right, so right off the bat, you can see that potions are here. This is your main way of healing all of your Pokemon. Uh, potion, Super Potion, Hyper Potion, Max Potion, Full Restore, they're all here along with remedies. So really interesting. Um, you can also get full heals in case you want to get rid of a status effect. I think full heals are pretty useless in the game because status effects go away after you're done with a battle, so really no point in using them. Same thing with Jubilife Muffin, it's just another fancy way of having a full heal. If your Pokemon get KO'd in the game, you can use a revive to revive them at half health. You're going to use these occasionally. And if you have access to them a little bit later on in the game, max revives full heal everything once a Pokemon's been knocked out. Now, rare candies are very sparingly found within the game, often found through quests and really, really rare drops, and that'll level up your Pokemon just once, so not too bad. Uh, right over here is going to be experience candy. Uh, experience candy small, medium, you've got large, and you also have extra large. So you can purchase these with real money in the game, or you can find them as drops. 
Right over this way is the mints in the game. This is the way that you're going to change up your nature for certain Pokemon. Now, as you guys know, natures have pluses and minuses of stats. So, for example, uh, what do we have over here? Adamant. Yeah, this one's going to be more geared towards the physical attackers because they have physical attack that grows up more easily and then special attack attack that grows more slowly. So it's pretty much the exact same thing as it has been in the previous game. So these are all of the mints right over here. So if you get a Pokemon with a bad nature, no worries, you can always mint them. All right, next up is going to be Stealth Spray. This is an awesome item in which you can purchase and it allows you to pretty much have a repel. If you think about it, you won't be able to be spotted by any Pokemon while you do it. So the sound of your footsteps are less likely to notice you for a small amount of time. So really awesome. Uh, next up in the area is going to be Evolution items. Uh, Fire Stone, a Water Stone. I've got tons of them. Uh, Moon Stone, Shiny Stone, Dusk Stone, Dawn Stone, Oval Stone, Reaper Cloth. Of course, we've got the Magmarizer, you've got Upgrade, you got the Dubious Disc, a Black Augurite, and a Linking Cord. Now, this isn't all the evolution items within the game. You can easily go and buy them from the store, but this is pretty much uh, what the items that you're going to need. Uh, use Black Augurite on uh, Scyther in order to make him into a Cleaver. Use a Dubious Disc on Porygon 2 to make it into Porygon Z, etc., etc. I'll show you guys all that stuff a little bit later. Uh, next up is going to be Grit Dust. These Grit items are going to be how you're going to power up your Pokemon. If you're familiar with effort values within the game, that kind of isn't a thing, but effort levels are. Anyway, so you want to find Grit Dust, Grit Gravel, Grit Pebble, and then the most powerful one is Grit Rock, which is going to be items that you can boost up the stats permanently for your Pokemon. I'll do a dedicated video on that very soon. All right, next up is going to be right over this way. This is Apricorn, the bread and butter of making Pokeballs. So you're going to need an Apricorn in order to make every single Pokemon. So stock up on these whenever you can. Uh, likewise, with the three different types of Pokeballs, um, you're going to need different types of Tumble Stones. Tumble Stone is also a crafting material for it. You have Black Tumble Stone, which allows you to craft Heavy Balls. And then the Feather Balls is going to use the Sky Tumble Stone. So that's it. Likewise, if you want to boost up the level of the Pokeballs, i.e. make a, um, a Tumble Stone, or make a specific feather ball into an upgrade one, you're going to need the iron chunks. So these five items here, iron chunk, tumble stones, and apricorns are the items that you use in order to make pokeballs within the game. That's it. All right, next up is medicinal leek. You have pep up plant, you got vivid chokes, and you got king's leaf along with bug warts. These are your crafting materials for potions and revives in the game. Uh, right over this way, this is a cake lure base. There's an item called cakes within the game, and we'll show you those a little bit later on in these item boxes. But this is the raw ingredient that you use in order to make the cakes. And cakes are used in order to throw at a Pokemon of a certain type in order to lower their defenses, and you can catch them a lot easier. So combine a cake lure base with some mushrooms, combine it with dazzling honey, hearty grains, plump beans, and even right over here, crunchy salt in order to get those cakes. Now, uh, these, the Caster Fern and Soot Foot Root and uh, Pop Pod, these are items that you can uh, use in order to craft smoke bombs. Uh, so yeah, we'll easily use those a little bit later. Um, Sword Cap, Iron Bark Tongue, and uh, yeah, those items are definitely used for the Ox Powers, along with Doppel Bonnets and Dire Shrooms. Uh, Candy Truffle is also another item that you can use for crafting, too. Uh, right over here is wood. You can find that near trees. And if you use the wood, you can craft little Pokeshi dolls. Kind of interesting. And you can just sell them for money. So kind of a good way of making money early on in the game is collecting three woods and crafting this bad boy. Um, so whenever you come across time, space, distortion, space, time, distortions, yeah, you're going to find a lot of shards. Uh, red shard, you're going to find blue shard, you're going to find green shard, and you'll find a lot of stardust too. And you can find stardust by cracking through different ore deposits that are sparkling. So all these items here are typically used to sell for different money. But if you hold on to the red, green, and blue shards and a stardust, you can craft a star piece, which will ideally sell for double. Anyway, I got a video coming out very soon that showcases exactly how to make money the easiest in the game. Uh, you got Comet Shard right over here, you sell it for money. And same thing with Nugget, historically you sell that for money too.
Next up is a Seat of Mastery. You know how Pokemon have agile style and they have strong style moves? They naturally learn how to do that upon leveling up. But if you don't want to wait for X amount of levels, you can bring the Seat of Mastery over to the Move Tutor and then have them learn or teach a Pokemon exactly how to do those strong style and agile style moves on any one of their moves. Um, next up is going to be charms. You want to be able to hold any one of these charms in your satchel at all times in order to gain their effects. So while you're walking around holding the warding charm, you'll be able to protect yourself from being afflicted with status conditions. Uh, sometimes a ghastly will use hypnosis and you'll fall asleep right over there while all the other ones attack you. Sometimes a poison type Pokemon will throw, uh, you know, a poison sludge bomb at you and you'll get poison. So anyway, that's definitely one of those items that you want to just hold on to. There's a couple different wards and charms in the game so I would explore them but not really too big of a deal considering the fact that you're going to be careful playing through the game. All right, Ox Power, you've got Ox Guard, and you've got Ox Power Guard. These are the equivalents of X Attack, X Defense, and in this game, you get something brand new called like an X Attack and an X Defense in one item, which is so powerful. Uh, so yeah, definitely craft these once you're able to towards the end of the game. Uh, right over this way, uh, Swap Snack. Uh, this one's going to be, you use this in battle to swap your defensive and offensive stats. Really weird. I don't know why it's in the game, and I don't know any usage for it, but hey, it's there. All right, next up is going to be, again, bread and butter, your Pokeballs. You have your regular Pokeball, you've got Great Ball, and you have the Ultra Ball as well. Um, as you go up, they're going to be higher success rates. Now, the next category of Pokeballs is Heavy Balls. Now, this Heavy Ball doesn't get thrown very far, so you have to get really, really close to these Pokemon in order to use them. And uh, same thing, Leaden Ball is the next higher one, and uh, the last one is going to be called Gigaton Ball, which has the best capture rate. Uh, next up, my personal favorite Pokeball is the Feather Ball. These fly so far, and it's literally like firing a bullet in the air. So there's really no arc or curvature on it. You throw it so fast. And then, of course, the better success is going to be the Wing Ball, and the best success is going to be the Jet Ball with that. Now, you may be wondering, oh, wow, cool, Orin Berries. I see a lot of these berries that are familiar. Like, what do they do in the game? Um, yeah, well, they're kind of similar to what they do in the main series games, but of course you can use them on wild Pokemon in the overworld. So an Orin Berry, yes, you can use it to heal 20 HP. Are you going to? Probably not. You're going to be throwing these at Pokemon in order to distract them and catch them from behind. Uh, same thing with Citrus Berry. Okay, cool. Use it to restore HP up to half of its max. Great. That'll help out. But all of these berries over here, you're going to be throwing them to distract Pokemon. And you could potentially uh, do better with that. Anyway, Lepa Berry um, restores power points. You've got uh, Paralysis right over here with the Cherry Berry. Chesto Berry to cure drowsiness. Petcha Berry to cure poisoning. Rost Berry to cure a burn. Aspire Berry to cure frostbite. Because there's no freezing in this game. It's frostbite, which is kind of like poison damage. Uh, Lum Berry, cure any status ailment. Nana Berry, uh, just like a third of HP. Hopo Berry, restore power points. Pineapp Berry is going to be really good. You might be wanting to use these if you want to grind up experience simply by throwing it forward. Let's say that there's an alpha Pokemon and you want to be able to use this. You can throw it forward and uh, if that Pokemon eats it, you're good and you'll get even more experience upon catching it. Now, one of the best items in the game is going to be the Golden Raspberry simply because if a Pokemon eats this and you allow them to take a couple bites, their capture rate is going to be lowered and it's going to be a lot easier to throw. All right, um, Spoiled Apricorn, you can use this as an item to distract and stun Pokemon with. You'll find these in trees and Pokemon will drop them, so really nothing too crazy about that. These are just like offensive items that you could throw at Pokemon to stun them. Uh, same thing with a Ball of Mud, same thing with a Snowball, and same thing with a Sticky Glove. These are just items that you throw at a Pokemon, you dunk them in the head, they're stunned and dazed, you walk around to the behind, and then you throw a Pokeball and get a better capture rate with a back hit. And then, of course, we talked earlier about cakes in the game. We got mushroom cake. We've got a honey cake. Um, all these items are for specific Pokemon. So right over here with the mushroom cake, it says it's effective at attracting more monstrous Pokemon, as well as dragon Pokemon. So what is considered a more monstrous Pokemon? No idea. The odds of you actually using these cakes versus throwing a golden raspberry or just doing a back throw, I mean, you're rarely going to use these things. Uh, honey cake. Effective at attracting bug Pokemon and those with fairy-like charms. So bug and fairy types, cool. 
Uh, Grain Cake is effective at attracting Pokemon that dwell and wander among the fields. All right, cool. So if you see someone near a field, it's a very vague description. Uh, Bean Cake over here, uh, uh, very effective at attracting fish as well as bird Pokemon. So that's very specific. Thank you. Salt Cake, good at attracting Pokemon that bear resemblance to grass, plants, or minerals. There we have it. And the last couple ones are going to be right over here. Smoke Bomb. Uh, this item is really useful for sneaking around. You throw it on the ground and it gives an area of effect uh, that allows you to hide. So very fun. And Scatter Bang. This is going to be an item that you throw at other wild Pokemon to get them pretty much out of your way. So pretty interesting. Okay, that's a brief description of all of the items within the game. Yeah, there's a lot of them, but I'm glad that you took the time to kind of get studied up on what these items do. So the biggest question also is what should you sell and what should you keep? And where exactly do you even sell your items? Well, you can head over to this guy right over here at the shop. And uh, what's interesting about a shop is that if you do the quests, that are involving with this character that runs the shop, you're gonna have an expanded shop that sells a lot of the different balls, which is pretty great. So, and it expands as you do them. But of course, what you want to do is you wanna be able to sell stuff. So if you click on ZR, you can go over here and you can sell all of anything that you want. Honestly, as a, as a player that plays video games in a horde mode mentality, I would honestly tell you to adapt that as well. I know you're going to be running low on money. Trust me, you are going to. But don't be tempted to sell 40 of your medicinal leaks because you're going to need those to craft some things. And there's going to be different requests and things like that where you may need them. Um, you may be tempted to go and sell some a grit rock for 3,000, but no way, that's an item that you can use to make your Pokemon more powerful. You might be tempted to sell any of these items, but they're very invaluable. Um, so what are you items are you going to sell in the game? Honestly, the only thing that you're going to sell is these Pokeshi dolls and you're going to sell Stardust, the Star Pieces, the Comet Shards, and the Nuggets. That's really all you want to sell in the game. Honestly, trust me, when I was playing through this game at the very beginning, I, I did that. I sold all this stuff. I'm like, I'm never going to need to craft this stuff. So I would just sell it because I needed more money to buy more Pokeballs and I needed money to buy more storage space. So anyway, you can go to the shop and you can buy all the uh, items outright with the uh, with this little character here. So if you think about it, a Pokeball right over here costs 100 Poke Dollars, which is kind of interesting. So anyway, another shop that you can come over is right down the ways over here at Anvin. Now, what he does differently is he sells all of the different materials. So if you think about it right over here, an, an apricorn, and then uh, one of these little uh, tumble stones, this is the equivalent of 40 plus 60 equals 100. You're going to need one of these um, and one of these in order to craft a Pokeball. So you can either craft it yourself or you can head on over and buy them outright. So as you can see, boom crafted a Pokeball. Um, what's really convenient about him is the fact that you can go over here and you can buy all these materials, right? Trust me, you're going to say, oh, why would I waste my time buying a whole bunch of different uh, apricorns or tumble stones when I could just go out there and grind for them? Yeah, you can, trust me, but what you're going to want to realize is that there's going to be times where you're just like, oh, dude, I need Pokeballs. So I don't want to go craft them. So you're going to actually come over here and you're going to buy a whole bunch of these. You'll buy some of these right over here to make more wing balls and jet balls. You'll buy some of these to make the better versions of those. Yeah, you're going to be using this guy a lot. Um, and then likewise, if you're looking for other crafting materials, you can come over here for crafting recipes and you can buy a bunch of them from him. Of course, most of these are going to unlock as you play through the game. So that's exactly how to buy and sell all your different items here. Uh, there's going to be um, a flute. Pretty interesting. That's a key item that you use towards end of the game. Uh, you've got Spiritome, where you want to go and, and collect all of his little spirits. Uh, you've got the Mirror, which allows you to change the forms of the genies. You've got some um, other adamant and uh, <laughs> I don't really want to go through too many spoilers on that but uh, and here's an item that allows you to change the Giratina form and of course you have all the plates for Arceus and you can then find some different poems floating around in the game but yeah that's it I don't want to go too much into spoilers on what that stuff does because um, I know that story spoilers are a thing so anyway that's it 
that's it for all of the items within the game. Let me know what you guys thought. I hope the overview helped out. I mean, that's really what I wanted to know upon jumping into this game for the first time. Had I known all of this stuff right when I first played the game, I would be way better off. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If the video helped you out, be sure to smash that like button and share the video with a friend. Subscribe for more Legends Arceus, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.